Well, good morning and welcome to our continued journey through Matthew's Gospel. And this morning we are in chapter 11, chapter 11 and verses 1 to 19. Matthew 11, chapter, one, chapter 11, verses 1 to 19. And let me read those now. After Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back, report to John what you see and hear. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. And the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did he go out to, into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did he go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No. Those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did he go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of woman, there is not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist, yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence and violent people have been raiding it. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you're willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. Whoever has ears, let them hear. To what can I compare this generation they're like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to others. We played the pipe for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right. By her deeds. I don't know if you remember a few years ago uh, seeing in the news and uh, London friends would have seen personally those uh, buses, those red buses, um, the adverts on them uh, paid for with the backing of the British Humanist Association and Richard Dawkins, uh, the prominent atheist. These advertisements on London buses that read, read this, there's probably no God. Now stop worrying and enjoy your life. Do you remember those? Did you hear of those? There's probably no God, so stop worrying and enjoy your life. And the implication was that if God did exist, he would only be out to spoil our fun. If there is a God, he will stop us enjoying life. And it's really interesting when you look at that criticism of God compared to the criticisms leveled at Jesus when he walked this earth. John the Baptist had proclaimed the great and terrible day of judgment foretold in Malachi. Yet so far Jesus has come and shown compassion to the crowds. Far from coming in mighty judgment, Jesus has seemingly left John languishing in prison. And perhaps that's what's behind the question. Are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? And Jesus' response is striking. He doesn't simply point to his power to show he is the Messiah. He points to his character. Did you see verse five? Jesus said, go back, report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and good news is proclaimed to the poor. 
Yes, Jesus has great strength, but he cares for those who are weak. And all of this looks back to Isaiah, these prophecies of the restoration that God would bring and bring through his king. And so perhaps John questions Jesus because of his patience, because of this delay before the day of judgment. John perhaps questions Jesus' patience for the crowds. It's Jesus' indulgence. Did he see verse 19? The Son of Man came eating and drinking. And this crowd say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. I wonder if we hold together, yes, the, the frankness about the reality of judgment, but also Jesus' incredible patience and compassion towards the last, compassion towards his people. I think the message of grace is as scandalous, if not more scandalous, than the message of judgment. I think the message of grace is as scandalous, if not more, than the message of judgment. When God stepped onto this earth, he was criticised for partying too much, for eating too much, for drinking too much, for enjoying creation too much, for being too friendly with people, the wrong sort of people. Which makes us think he's absolutely nothing like the God that Richard Dawkins and other atheists don't believe in. Absolutely nothing like the God who is simply out to spoil everyone's fun. I think this passage asks us, is this the Jesus we worship? Or perhaps have we sanitised him? I wonder if the criticisms levelled at Jesus might be levelled at us. We're Christians watching this party too much, eat, drink too much, seem to have too much fun and too many friends. I wonder if we need to look at Jesus afresh and be prepared to change some of our preconceived ideas. It's true that many are unprepared for the suffering that Jesus does say will be part of the Christian life, and we must be ready for that. But I think some of us are unprepared for the joys as well. Go report to John what you hear and see. Look at the character of Jesus. Look at how he lives. Wisdom is proved right by her deeds. Let me pray. Almighty God, thank you for Jesus, the friend of sinners. Perhaps those words were first spoken as an insult, but what precious words they are to us, friend of sinners. Thank you for Jesus' joy and life and desire to share joy and life with all people. That, that love that brought him to earth, that sent him to the cross, so that we might, through his death, have life and life to the full. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. I will uh, leave you with some questions, perhaps to reflect to prompt your prayers. Don't be limited to these, but if they're useful, just I encourage you to have a read through the passage and maybe previous bits of Matthew as well to reflect on these together. So here they are. Which events in Matthew's gospel so far have showed Jesus' compassion? What about the joy he brings? What aspect of Jesus' character might you need to dwell on afresh? What aspect of Jesus' character do your unbelieving friends need to hear about? I'll leave those questions for you to reflect for a while.